Dear Ofa, I'm so glad you're here and that we can have uh, this conversation here in your exhibition at Albertina. We decided together with Elsie Lana, the curator of the exhibition, that we would um, like to have a talk about um, art technology, about materials, about processes and everything that is involved in the creation of your artworks uh, and um, to obtain a deeper understanding uh, of the artworks from a material point of view. Albertina received a generous donation um, with many artworks on paper and they arrived uh, to us in May, in the midst of May and we immediately um, prepared them for the presentation in our studio of conservation and framing. And we are sitting here um, surrounded by two woodblock prints, by drawings behind us, and a painting in the back and a sculpture, because in this exhibition we can see many different works of you with different media and maybe we can start with an idea, where are you doing your prints? Where are you working on, for example, such large woodblock prints, as we can see here, which consist sometimes of several pieces. I think we have one consisting of two pieces on three, one of four pieces. Um, with a total size, I think, of 240 to 480 centimeters, so quite large. Where are you doing this? I work with several um, workshops, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, I did most of my etchings were done at the, in Israel in the Cabri um, Gottesman uh, Etching Center in Galilee. Uh -huh. They have their huge press. And um, I started actually when I, when I started when I was uh, when I came back to Israel after having been in France, I bought a, a, a press for etching. So mm -hmm. I, I had that press in my studio, and I worked in my studio with um, by myself. Then I was very poor artist, so I couldn't afford assistance. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I had an assistant who really, I had my own uh, workshop. Mm -hmm. And then I did uh, dozens of, of plates. It was like a disease. Only in the mid nineties that uh, I started when the, the, they opened this Gottesman etching center in Galilee, that I started working with the huge uh, plates. You have one of them uh, exhibited. It's a self-portrait in Cabri. It's exhibited here. And uh, then I did some work also in Paris with uh, Michael Woolworth. I did all the very large woodcuts with him. So you, ha you have a second atelier, a second studio in Paris, right? Yes. Yes. And you are sometimes there, yes. and for projects you go into that printing studio yes, then? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. But um, <laughs> there is something um, I, I must... <laughs> it's, it's funny, mm -hmm. but you know, uh, I work most of the time alone in my studio, and very often I don't want to be alone anymore. So <laughs> I go to workshop and work with people, and uh, that's great. I, I think that many artists do that also for not being alone in their studio and working with someone else. For a change. Yes. Yeah. Sometimes I work in my studio, prepare the plates in my studio. Are you do that on your yes. own? Yes. For instance, I draw the, the woodcuts in my, in my studio and then send them to the to the workshop and they are printed. Maybe you can explain that uh, a little bit more in detail. You, you, you prepare the wood plate? For the wood and uh, as well for, as for the aquatins is the same way of working. I uh, use um, white chalk on a, on a black plate. Mm -hmm. uh, for, for woodcut, just a white chalk and then I engrave 
where the, the where I drew the, the white, yes. So, mm -hmm. and for in aqua tint, I use the prepare the plate with the aqua tint, and uh, I um, uh, work on the top of it with the with the pastel oil pastel. So, and the, this oil pastel white, it stops the the acid, mm -hmm. so therefore it stays white. So, it's what I see is what I get. Yeah, and that's very uh, it. It suits me that mm -hmm. that way. But uh, uh, each printer has its own uh, uh, touch, mm -hmm. and and you can feel who printed these plates and who, for instance, for those um, very large uh, woodcuts, mm -hmm. I wanted uh, them to be. Um, uh, very black, black and white, you mm -hmm. know, not to have too much of the texture of the wood. Mm -hmm. So I had to print them with a press. It, it was pr printed in Paris and even a little bit too much uh, inked, a little bit, so for some of them. Mm -hmm. uh, but for other prints, I like the, the texture of the wood mm -hmm. and um, and um, for instance, the big head you have here, it's, um, it was printed by hand, not by press. You see, so you can feel more the... So the plate is lying on a table? Yes. And you apply the paper on yes. it and then like the Japanese woodblock print... Yes, me and my assistants are doing that. And they have this round... And they can, they can see if it's... So it's, it's quite a process. Um, and each one is a little bit different, absolutely, right? Absolutely, absolutely, yes, mm -hmm. yes. Is that something you prefer, that uh, each print is a little bit You know, I do different? so small editions that um, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. And uh, also it's part of the prints, you know, it's... Uh, each print is different. And... Um, it is always um, a surprise when you when you take the mm -hmm. the paper and you look at the print. Always surprised because uh, you never really know what is going on when you mm -hmm. when you take. It uh, depends sorry. also on the paper, right? Yes. Which yes. kind of paper you choose? Also, also, mm -hmm. and. Um, the, the difference between a, a print and a, um, and a drawing is um, a, a drawing is very simple. You know, if I, if, for instance, take a, a drawing by Rembrandt, yeah, you know, mm -hmm. you can feel when he's very uh, methodic, very delicate, very. Uh, um, you know the, the, those all those parallel lines, uh, and and you can feel when he's violent and he almost um, uh, he tears the paper. You know when, uh, but with etching, I can make a very violent um, um, line, mm -hmm. but then I put it very little. A few moments in the acid, so it will be very delicate. So you have two. You have when you see um, a, a, an etching, you already has two um, uh, different um, tensions between um, the, the drawing and the way you put it in the in the acid. How long it is in the acid? So you have how long you let it work? Yeah. So it, it. It, it it it's more. Um, uh, sophisticated mm -hmm. way of looking at a line. Mm -hmm. And afterwards, you have the printing. Mm -hmm. Also in the printing, you can do many things that are not um, uh, in the drawing, in the first, in the, uh, then. So, so you, you have... Mean, you mean how much color you yes. give the plate exactly. and take off yes. again? And, yes. Yeah. Uh, therefore, the difference, you know, a, a drawing is very direct. Mm -hmm. The etching is, is, drawing is like writing music for a solo instrument. 
and and um, etching is writing for trio or quartet and you hear all the instruments together you see the violent line but you see the the um, the acid the very um, um, delicate way it was uh, etched mm -hmm. and you see the the way it was print so and it's like three different instruments you know like like mm -hmm. And um, just one question in between. I, I read that uh, you, you one time left a plate in the acid yeah. by chance, and yeah, then yeah. it was an interesting result because it was etched so hard. Yes. And um, you are playing with such things, or you let them be, or. Um, you know, I love accidents. Is that an accident? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know. You know, evolution mm -hmm. is is um, uh, is made by accidents. You know, it's Darwin, and in, in art the same. Uh, but um, you you have to be uh, attentive to to um, to accidents, and sometimes you have fantastic chance. What you're talking about is about a landscape I was doing in the 80s. I was doing a, a landscape in the mountains around Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And I was doing watercolors and paintings. And when I took them to the studio, it was awful. It was like, it was like Provence. It was not the, the, the violent light of mm -hmm. Israel. Mm -hmm. And one day I forget this plate in the, in the acid. And the result was almost black. And I realized that this black was the real translation of the violent light. Mm -hmm. Out there this, in the landscape. Yeah, so, I disco so it, it, it was a fantastic discovery for me. Mm -hmm. Because then I could make those black landscapes, which were uh, closer to my vision of, of that um, very violent light we have in Israel. Yeah. and. Uh, it's it's um, accidents are sometimes fantastic and you, we have to work with this not not to be afraid of i believe that for instance the real um, etchers are people who are um are artists who are uh, uh, working with um, with accidents we're not afraid of accidents mm -hmm. for instance jean dine mm -hmm. is fantastic Printmaker, and he's working on that with with the accident. He's like. Um, so what could happen? It, it's uh, it's a way of um, uh, not being in control all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. To let chance mm -hmm. be introduced in our work. And for instance, Giacometti, who was a great a great draftsman. But unfortunately, his, his etching, his prints are not at the same level of his drawings. Mm -hmm. I think he was, he liked very much to control everything. Mm -hmm. And so the, the etchings and his lithographs are like drawings, but less. Mm -hmm. uh, for, for people who are doing etching, like Picasso, like Munch, like Jim Dine, they, they, it's something else. It's, it is not a drawing uh, printed. It's, it is something else. It is um, being, it is accepting accident. Mm -hmm. Working with the accident, accepting the accident as something that you should take into consideration and, and um, and always be aware that it can be a huge chance that you had these accidents right now. You know? mm -hmm. so, so that leads us a little bit also to the question of perfection. I mean, uh, printing is, has been always something where perfection is, is a topic, uh, yes. because originally it has the idea to be serial, yes. and each one sh should be comparable to the other? What is your approach to this? A print is a, is a drawing in action, in process. Oh, that's in process. interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, you can make uh, an etching, printed, mm -hmm. uh, take 
um, um, and accept that print and continue. So you have a second, a third. I have plates which I, I have, uh, I think, uh, 17 or 20 states. Mm -hmm. A stage of, of the of the same plate, so you 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 have really like a, a movie, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's it's and uh, did you document them? Oh yeah, or? sure, sure, sure. Okay, photographically. Sure. Yes, yes, okay. sure, sure. That's interesting because the the plate is changed. Yes, you have the prints from the different stages, but Absolutely. at the end the plate has everything in it. Yes, as it's charged with it's, all it's, of that. Yeah, and then you yeah. raise. But you keep the all the um, all the process, mm -hmm. so it's it's kind of a movie. Yeah, yeah I, I did some exhibition like this when I show all the the all the prints of the same plate, mm -hmm. and um, so. I think your uh, series of drawings, uh, self-portrait drawings, have something of that too. Because there's this moment and that moment and the next one and another Maybe, one. And yes, you see yes. so many yes. things in these drawings. Yes. Maybe, yeah. I mean it is it is linked to my to my love to to prints, yes. To to have to make series and almost identical. Or the, the always changing being yes. or yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like making a movie. And um, coming back again to the materials, if you make wood block prints, which kind of wood do you choose? Well, very simple, the plywood. Okay, so this is not yeah. a special um, thing to think about. So you have that and you like how it is to be worked. Uh, with? I started making woodcuts, it was, I think, uh, about 2008 or 9, mm -hmm. I was a little bit tied with the... Uh, um, I became, you know, I did hundreds of etchings. I mean, mm -hmm. I think between five or six hundred plates. And I, become, I became a little virtuoso in, in doing that. Mm -hmm. And I didn't like it. I, I wanted something more... Um, primary. Mm -hmm. And then I started making those woodcuts. So just a thought, can you say that uh, changing a medium can initiate a reset or... Absolutely. Yeah. It is like uh, etching is a little bit like playing violin and woodcut is like a uh, bass, you know, <laughs> like heavy, heavy tool. Yeah and very simple and I needed simple things at that time. I started also to make uh, wood sculptures, mm -hmm. which are also the same uh, way of... Uh, of um, reducing. Reducing, yes. You take off material yes. and the sculpture comes it is, into form. It, is, it's, it has to be simpler. Mm -hmm. And if we look at these two um, Wood, wood block prints, I, I find it interesting that the one is um, created with white lines. Yes. So as far as I understood, you paint your wood black. Yes. Then you draw on it with yes. charcoal, take out the material, yes. and afterwards you get um, this kind of negative uh, yes. impression. And the other one is worked in, in the, the other way, way around, the, the positive way. way. Yes, I, I did some um, black drawing with ink mm -hmm. and, and this was done with... And the, you take everything out, what you don't want yeah, to stain. Yeah, it was done with the, with the chainsaw. Ah, yeah. So it's very um, heavy and also, um, it's, I mean, I did the, the engraving in 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the drawing was days, mm -hmm. okay, but uh, after the drawings was final, it took a few minutes to mm -hmm. do that, I mean, hours. You mean to take out the wood? Yes, and yes. You do that very quick? Very quickly, yeah. I mean, it's 
either you cut or you don't. Mm -hmm. It's not like etching where you can uh, erase and uh, that's what I like in woodcuts. Uh, more and more, uh, I mean, aging, it's, it's, um, I like it more. Mm -hmm. And about the color, I think this one is a little, uh, depends on the light, but yeah, a little bit bluish, violet, yeah, violet, a little violet, yes. But it seems to be in the group of works that we have now in our collection, a little bit unique, so you prefer black. Yes, yes. Probably. Yes. Yeah. Yes, here it was. And this one is a... Yeah, a little bit softer, I think it was, I needed to, it to be a little softer. And um, where do you get these large papers from? I'm very interested oh, in this that. Is the, a, the workshop, I don't know. <laughs> the printing workshop yeah, has yeah, them. Yeah, so that's yeah. fine. You go there, everything's yes, there. Yes. You can use it. Yes, they, they, no special they, take, they take care. They take. I have some pieces with the Chinese paper, with the rice paper. Uh, more more drawings, drawings and some some other prints, but they're not here. And uh, also, it, I did some mm -hmm. works on Chinese, the woodcuts on Chinese and rice paper. It's really beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, about the formats, we already said we have very large ones, large works on paper now and very small ones. And I read um, about your attitude towards that, that you prefer the either very small or very large yes. formats. So yes, because you... it's, it's the same um, feeling. When you, you're facing a very large format, mm -hmm. you are uh, alone in front of it. You don't see what's going on. And um, when, you have, when you face a small piece, also you're alone with a piece. So it's very important in, the, in, in uh, terms of content. Mm -hmm. Since almost of all my work is about uh, self-portraiture, so it's about facing um, someone. Yeah. And just being focused, you know, like I, I look at you, so I look at you, there is nothing there. No. So the same way, I, I like my works to be looked that way, mm -hmm. like um, face to face, mm -hmm. without involving other uh, things around. Mm -hmm. I, I have difficulties making the, the medium form, uh, format. It's, it's very difficult to me to 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 make pieces that size, for instance. And just one question: Do you draw in the vertical uh, yes, position yes. or on the table? Vertical. No, no, yes, always. Mm -hmm. Also the and, plates. And the plates also. Also, yes. Yeah. Also, yeah, mm -hmm. always. Yes. And with the tools you work, yes. then. Yes, it's oh, quite okay. physical. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you use uh, different electrical tools. Yes. With that? I think for this one, so you get this the very is, fine uh, lines. This is an instrument, it's called an um, electric pencil mm -hmm. and it's uh, vibrating so you can, it, it scratches the wood very delicately. And here I have these pieces which was done with a very heavy uh, chainsaw. And um, I use all kind of uh, electric, heavy electrical tools. But also I use traditional uh, scrapers. Scrap, yes. Yeah, maybe we can uh, talk about the uh, topic of series, yeah. um, seriality. I think uh, you make small editions, right? Or sometimes only one piece, a print, but only one piece. Yes. And that's why? I do uh, etching, uh, not because I want to uh, have, uh, because I want to have many prints of the same, mm -hmm. but because I cannot do that, but with etching. Mm -hmm. So it's the medium. It's a medium. So sometimes I do just one print, the editions of one, and uh, uh, 
I'm not sure people understand that. They think that uh, print is a um, way of uh, reproducing pieces of art to make some money. To disseminate. Uh, yes, yeah. and, but this is not about it. Mm -hmm. Especially today when it's so easy to have a digital print of... <laughs> yeah. And, uh, so uh, it's not for... Uh, uh, multiplicating the, uh, the piece of art, but it is because you cannot do that, but with this technique. Mm -hmm. So it's so, a conceptual approach yes. to media. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and um, very often I do, just do one, or I have editions of three or four, I mean, it's... And very often I do also uh, monotypes. Mm -hmm. So, each uh, print is different from the other. Yeah, that's so great. It's beautiful. That's, that's, um, well, you, you mix the techniques. Uh, yes. Right, we had that look at the ed edging, dry point edging, and you reworked it. As, as you while, while, you know, before it was printed, mm -hmm. I, I added uh, ink and with a brush or and uh, so it's it's an original in yeah a way. so that's very important for us to know so this yes. is unique and, yes uh, so there are series of where each print is unique piece i read that in the 1970s when all artists turned to conceptual art you were thinking about your work and maybe where to position yourself or you can correct me, I understood no, no, it like it's, that. It's, and um, you said something about craft, that you, yeah, uh, yeah. What, what, do you, what is your approach to craft or? You know, the 70s w w were um, very interesting, but very tough time. Mm -hmm. and, um, and at the same time, I think in art schools, the traditional techniques were still taught. Yes. But you, you were at the Académie at the des Beaux-Arts Beaux in yes, Paris? Yes, sure. And, but it was, it was like, you know, from the, it, it was taboo to, to use, to use a, a, a brush or pencil. Yeah. I mean, you had to be um, not personal. You know, th that was the, you don't have to, um, it, it was about, um, uh, um, getting rid of uh, of the um, uh, personal handwriting. Mm -hmm. It was about being, being impersonal, and uh, I, I refuse that. So craft is part of that of having a, a signature, personal signature, leaving a personal mark. Also, yes, uh, yeah. yes, and handwriting. Mm -hmm, yeah. And uh, craft is a part of that, that process. And I have some difficulties at that time. But on the other side, um, uh, I was accepted. I mean, artists understood that uh, I was stubborn with that. Mm -hmm. And that uh, I believe in that, and they they accepted it. So I was quite, uh, uh, I was not considered as a um, uh, traditional. traditional reactionary artist. Mm -hmm. Also, I did some works with video, and which, uh, and I wrote text about all this um, process. And but. Uh, what what uh, was important for me was to get back to the essence of of painting. What is the what is the the, um, the first step? And uh, this is how I, I get to to self portraits actually, which was I think it's the, the beginning of what painting is about. It's about. Uh, Representing a mirror. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you uh, yesterday I was here in the in the show, mm -hmm. nobody understood that it was me, the artist, and I'm <laughs> all over the. So I was very proud of it, mm -hmm. because people would look at the self-portraits and feel as if they look at a mirror.
This is what I, what I feel. You know, you, you, you go to the, to the Louvre and you see a self-portrait of Rembrandt. But you see a man who is looking at himself in a mirror. So you, you hesitate. Is it a mirror and you are Rembrandt? Or he's looking at a mirror and you are a mirror? Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that that is the essence of art, this relationship between the the personage you look on the canvas and your feeling. And uh, going back to to print, there is some strangeness looking at the print. Mm -hmm. The same kind of strangeness you you look at a self portrait of Rembrandt. I think that's the essence of art. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ofa, so much for this interview. It has been so interesting. And um, yeah, we hope to see you again. <laughs>